But you have to say for yourself. What's for dinner? What's going on here? What's that stink? What's this for? What time is it? What's that? Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Hey, my beautiful people, welcome back to my channel, Watson's World. If this is the first time you are visiting the channel, go ahead and click on the subscription button right now. Also, click on the notification bell so that you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Noble Cup. You understand? I want to take the time out to big up all of the people who have been following me from day one. A long time this channel they're on, you know, but I am not a consistent YouTuber. But um, that's because I have other passions, right? There are other things that I like to do. Um, I, I don't use YouTube as my main source of income. You know, I have other passions. As you all know, I I'm, I was in IT for a while and then I transitioned to the police service where I did fraud investigations and um, cyber forensic examinations. Now I work as a senior digital forensic investigator and I'm very passionate about digital forensics because cyber crimes are on the increase. We see more and more criminals transition into cyberspace to commit crime because it's a borderless crime. It's a little bit technical, but I love the challenge and I, I feel like, you know, the, the world is going to need more persons like myself um, as it relates to cyber crimes investigations. But apart from that, guys, uh, you know, let me not waste any more time on that. Uh, let us get right into what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you today about trust. Trust. How many of you ever thought about how important trust is to our society and to us as individuals, as human beings. It has been the basis of human relation from the beginning of time. But not many of us really sit down and think about trust and how it has impacted us both negatively and positively. I'm going to tell you why I decided to talk a little bit about trust today. Because when I think about what is happening to our women and children in Jamaica especially, and how they've been abducted and killed in, in some very heartless ways, and considering all the investigations that have been done and these investigations revealing that many of the perpetrators are persons who the victims were familiar with. It is important that we look at how these victims were compromised by these perpetrators through this thing called trust, right? Uh, I don't want you to think I'm going to be drawing out this one. Um, just bear with me now because at the end of this, uh, the intention is for vulnerable groups like women to reconsider, reevaluate how they live and how they look at things, right? Now, I am going to explore what trust is. I've looked online for different definitions of trust and I say, you know what? Um, I like this definition. There's a definition on changingminds.org that I really like. And I'll just read a little part of it. So it says, trust is both an emotional and logical act. Emotionally, it is where you expose your vulnerabilities to, to people, but believing they will not take advantage of your openness. Logically, it is where you have assessed the probabilities of gain and loss, calculating expected utility based on hard performance data, and concluded that the people in question will behave in a predictable manner. In practice, trust is a bit of both. I trust you because I have experienced your trustworthiness and because I have faith in human nature. We feel trust. Emotions associated with trust include companionship, 
friendship, love, agreement, relaxation, and comfort. And that is why you find when you're in a relationship, when you feel loved, a lot of times trust is associated with that love. If that person, if you don't feel like you can trust that person or you feel comfortable with that person, then a lot of times the love starts to disappear and all of that, right? Now, there are a number of different ways we can define trust. Here are the dimensions of trust and consequence definitions. Now, I'm just going to look at two dimensions here, which I think is very important and, and um, pertinent to what I'll be discussing later on in this video. The first dimension of trust is predictability. And I find this very interesting, guys, because what it says, it is a normal part of the human condition to be constantly forecasting ahead. We build internal models of the world based on our experiences and what others tell us and then use these to guess what will happen next. This allows us to spot and prepare for threats and also make plans to achieve our longer term goals. Now hear this part. This part is very interesting and I think this part is something that everybody can relate to. The greatest unpredictability is at 50%. A reliable enemy can be preferable to an unpredictable friend, as at least we know where we are with them. So we know where we stand with the enemy. But can you imagine somebody you consider your friend, right? Somebody who you think they have your back and then at the end of the day you find out they don't have your back. That's an unpredictable friend. You can't trust them, the people right and we see a lot of that kind of situation in the cases that we have seen where women were abducted or children were abducted and killed so the next dimension which is the last one i'm going to look at is value exchange right um, that's what trust is all about value exchange and what this means most of what we do with other people is based around exchange which is the basis of for all business as well as simple relationships so a relationship between a man and a woman all right a friends uh, employees and employers etc at its simplest it is exchange of goods i will swap you two sheep for one cow it is easy to calculate the value in such material bargaining Things get more complex when less tangible forces come into play. A parent exchanges attention for love. A company exchanges not only pay, but good working conditions for the intellectual and manual efforts of its workforce. So value exchange works because we each value things differently. If I have a whole flock of sheep, but no milk, then I can do business with a person who has a herd of cows but no clothes. The principle of re reciprocity is what binds societies together. And what they mean is that you give something and um, you get something in return. Now that we understand trust, let us look at how trust impacts our judgment and in a lot of cases, it leads to our downfall. I've always had problems with trust. And this, that's because I know what people are capable of doing. Especially when I was in the police force, I learned so much about people that I found it difficult even to trust my own colleagues. I have very few friends. A lot of my friends I have no good friends who I have a certain level of trust in are persons who I've known for 20 years and more. And even with these friends, there is a certain level of trust that I'll have. My friends will understand. For me, it's about constantly evaluating people. Now, I do understand that it's easier to trust people you have known for a while. And, you know, that is a given based on our experience with the person, right? We build more trust in that person, right? And we are less likely to trust people we are not too familiar with. But there is a flaw with 
trust in people because of your experiences and that is because people can be unpredictable a lot of people women and men get into relationships and they build this trust only to find out that later on um, the individual that they are with right only try to gain their trust because they want certain things in return and as soon as they get it then all hell break loose right it, it, trust is a big thing in human relations but why am i going around in circles here well when i think about the problem in jamaica of women being abducted and even our children being abducted and being abducted by persons they know it has to do with trust because if a lot of these women who were abducted if they did not trust these individuals perhaps they would not have fallen in the trap of these individuals what do i mean by that well let us look at a more recent abduction the abduction of um, Kenise jackson uh, that case has rocked jamaica a very young girl i think what she was 19 years old beautiful girl with a promising future and she was abducted and killed by somebody she knows and she probably thought she knew him well right she um, probably got a ride from him to work you know more than once right this is somebody who was much older than her so it's probably somebody she look up to and respect right and and so when he picked her up and he said to her he left something at his home and he's just going to go and pick it up she trusted that he would have done the right thing not knowing that this individual was unpredictable not knowing that this individual had devious intentions right and so she trusted him she went with him what did he do he raped and killed her and then left her body went to work go back home and then carry her go dispose of her I am not saying that you know if we trust nobody at all so let me make that clear because I mean we we need that kind of comfort level at times we need to know that we have people that we can look to um, but I would say it should be people that you have built a relationship a certain closeness with over over years and these are persons that you've constantly evaluate and realize that oh you know what i can trust this person sometimes it's hard it's hard to predict what people are capable of doing but i feel like if you're always alert if you're always observant if you're always evaluating people then um you know you you will have a greater chance of of protecting yourself i know some people might say boy but it exhausting for constantly i reevaluate people it exhausts them for constantly have this distrust um i would say that at the end of the day it's just one of those things that you're probably going to have to deal with if you want to protect yourself. Uh, there are certain situations where you live in a home with somebody who is your husband. You're, you know, you 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 basically evaluate the person on an ongoing basis, and you say, "All right, this person is good," right? But also, it's important for you to prepare your mind, prepare yourself for changes, right? And make sure that you're prepared to take away yourself from the situation if you see that those changes are not in your best interest right if you realize that this man have a tendency to be violent then it means you can't trust him right especially if you put him hand on you before it's important for us to re-evaluate how we trust others and realize that we have to know create a tier system of trust and constantly evaluate people why am i do a video like this i do a video like this because i think it's important i think it's important for us to rethink our thinking i think it's important that if we're going to protect ourselves that we take precautions that we consider all of these things these days it pays to be paranoid it pays to question things it pays to constantly reevaluate yourself it pays to take precautions on all levels i did another video 
right? Um, things that can save your life in Jamaica. You guys can check that out. Um, I talk about a lot of methods that you can use to protect yourself. But guys, we don't want what happened to Canis Jackson to be happening there in Jamaica anymore. I, we cannot always depend on the police to protect our women and our children. So we ha now have to make the conscious effort to protect ourselves and having knowledge. Knowledge is power. Rethinking the way we do things. Guys, I know this video is long, but thank you very much for taking the time out um, to listen to me. I mean, you can always give me your feedback down below. Some of you may have a different perspective on these things, right? I would love to hear from you. You can check out the description below. My email address is down below, right? You can shoot me an email and give me your opinion on, on today's discussion. All right, people, until next time, thank you for taking the time out to watch this video. Remember, um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Noble Cop. Also, subscribe. Until next time, my beautiful people, walk good. Yeah, man.